Jeff Hardy's of Hardy's One managed to find all of the information that I needed to get my Sound Blaster 8-bit working. I would have found it eventually, but he really saved me a lot of time. He gave me two different uh, sets of disk images, one for the 360K floppies and one for the 720s. It was the latter that I wound up using. I also got the user reference manual, and um, it contains all the information I needed to set the correct IRQ and address ports. Uh, for the record, I ended up setting it back to its default IRQ7 um, <clears throat> IO port 220. And it is now working happily in the IBM PS2 Model 30. This is an 8086 model, so it does not support the AT um, <clears throat> or any programs that require an AT class machine or better. Uh, one of those being the Parrot utility. The Parrot utility allows you to interact with your voice and it responds vocally. It's a very interesting program. I wish I could use it, but sadly I can't. I don't have my microphone. I had a boom microphone somewhere and I can't find it. So I'm using the um, Magnavox, I mean it's a perfect machine for the era, to record uh, samples of audio tracks to the computer and then play them back from there. For the, dera for the derainder, <laughs> for the remainder of this video, we're going to actually be using the tripod. Now here's proof that I do own one, but I only use it when I absolutely have to. It just gets in my it gets in my way and it's just a pain in the neck. I slide this a little bit forward. We'll get the monitor straightened out. I'm gonna kill the lights and uh, maybe give you guys a better view here. There we go. So as of right now, the software is completely tested and loaded. Um, we're gonna restart the machine so that you can see the auto execute bat file load the sound card driver on startup. I had to do this manually by creating my own auto execute bat file, um, which also contains the mouse driver and it sets all of my directory paths. For the record, I have Windows 2.03 and DOS 3.3 on here, and we'll uh, take a look at Windows 2.03 before we get into this, just so that you guys can see it. But for those of you who have never seen Windows 2.0, this is it. Not much to look at. Um, and on an 8086 class machine, it does not come up in color for some reason. Um, unless you have a genuine CGA monitor. I'm using an MCGA display on an IBM PS2. Uh, so it does not support color in Windows. Um, I could probably try a different driver, but that would be too much fun. So, anywho. I'm going to just visually show you what is in the Sound Blaster folder. Uh, we have the um, FM organ, which uses FM synthesizers to create music. We have the Parrot utility. I don't know what this is. Uh, this is the SB Talker tool, which allows you to do text-to-speech, and the VoxKit tool. Now let's quit Windows. But you're going to do this entirely from DOS. Alright, I'm going to go into my Sound Blaster directory. And the first tool I'm going to show you is the FM organ. This is the coolest uh, feature that I found. It's a little bit like the one that was included on the old Turtle Beach cards back in the late mid mid 90s. Um, I believe it was called MIDI Orchestrator. And uh, what it does is it allows you to manipulate MIDI files or create MIDI files using an actual keyboard. Because it supports, uh, th this card has a game controller, it also can be used as a MIDI controller. So let's start by loading an existing file. I'm going to do F6 to load. And it comes with a bunch of different uh, demonstrator, demonstrator files. Let's do... Um, Home sweet, what's that? Home sweet home. If you don't have a dedicated um, MIDI keyboard, you can use your existing keyboard.
it'll play a maximum of two notes at a time. No, actually, no, just one. You can change the instrument from violin to harp if you choose to do so. Or a synthesizer. I could also change the rhythm from a Roomba to a March by hitting F5. Back to Roomba. Now we're in Swing Town. Play a different song. I don't particularly like this one. This one is called Swing Low Sweet Chariot. But it can't quite play two notes at the same time. What if I create a new one? Um, let's try that. F8 load. No, it doesn't really let me. It doesn't really let me create my own music. Um, yeah, let's see. What's F3 do? Shell to DOS? Yes. Oh, neat. Let's go back into it. I think I'm missing something here. Oh. There we go. Six. That's all it has for songs. Um, I mean, that's quite a bit. This is Jingle Bells, I believe. In this case, I can choose between piano, organ, flute, or synthesizer. Enough of that. Let's go into something else. Okay. Why don't we take a look at VoxKit? VoxKit allows you to play and record WAV files. We're going to play an existing file. Uh, it has two to, two to choose from. One of them is a, a snip from one of the BBC broadcasts. Do join us again tomorrow. Good night. And the other one is a recording of frogs. Okay, we're going to create our own from the cassette tape on my Magnavox cassette player. Start the recording now. It is now recording from the cassette player. Unfortunately, I can't hear what's happening. There's no monitor feature, but uh, I could have I could wire one in with a with a Y splitter just you know to have that. Okay, that is enough of that. So we're going to stop and play. see what that does. Um, it allows me to save it uh, to the drive if I choose to. Call it BGs. Now I can go back to it later if I choose to. Alright.
This card has more capabilities than even that. All I have to do is load a, um, a simple driver, and I can do text-to-speech right from the keyboard, right from the DOS prompt, even, using the SB Talker utility. All I need to do is type in SB Talker, and that will load the driver for me. Oh, let's try that again. SB talk. There we go. Now the driver is loaded. SB talker can be accessed. Yeah, it's already loaded. So from here I can just use the say program right from the DOS prompt. End quote. Thank you, Jeff Hardy, for your help in making this possible. Okay. That is that. Now, I can actually play a text file, which I did earlier. I'm going to probably clip that in right about now. But it was disastrous, um, as you'll clearly see. That was purely awful, um, but it shows that it can't automatically skip over certain characters, including the equal sign. Uh, all right, what do we got here? Um, there was one other utility that I found intriguing, S-B-A-I-T-S-O. S -B -A -I -T -S -O. It's, um, This is Dr. Spatzel, my creative labs. It's kind of a tongue in cheek. We'll enter your day now. Okay, it's kind of a tongue in cheek, um, computerized version of a psychologist. It never answers questions, apparently. I, I actually have friends who are in that field, and, and basically what they do is they listen to what you say, and, and then they say, well, how does that make you feel? They never really dig anywhere deeper into that. It's trouble why they're no longer in that profession. But, um, because <laughs> it was kind of pointless. Kind of like this. So watch this. I'll just put in my name. The Art Depot. O N. Hello, Brandon. My name is Dr. Spatzel. I am here to help you. Please say whatever is in your mind freely. Our conversation will be kept in high confidence. Memory contents will be wiped off after you leave. So tell me about your problems. So let's address the elephant in the room first. What happens if you swear at it? He wants your language help. Please don't repeat. So that's what it does. <laughs> Please don't repeat. It's kind of like a Siri from hell, you know. Um, how are you? Doing well, thanks. And you? Good. What are you mumbling about? Oh, really? The price of tea in China is too high. Please give me more information about it. It's high. What are your real problems? One plus one. Please enter more information. One plus one equals... Please type properly. It's supposed to respond to math questions. Complete your sentence, please. Let's try that again. What is 1 plus 1? 1 plus 1 equals 2. There we go. <laughs> okay, got it. What is the root of 4? Brandon, I need more computing power to answer your question. Nice. Alright, um, 
what comes up must come down. Let's see if it says anything. What is it that you really want to do? How old are you? I am not sure if I am. Okay. And it kind of goes on like that. It just sort of doesn't really accomplish anything other than it might impress you know the uh the, the new sound cart owner for about five seconds before they give up and go on to something else i think we covered everything there is a test utility i'll let that run for a sec um it is annoying but nevertheless verify the irq and address settings irq7 we're going to do the FM music test. Okay. Voice output. Hello there. Hello there. Hello there. Okay, that's annoying. So there you go. Uh, a full test of the Sound Blaster 8 bit and uh, how incredibly functional the card is even after 25 years uh, or 24 years. I'll give it 24. Of use. Um, I'm going to take the shoe off the bottom of my camera so that way I can put it away. So that pretty much sums it up. Um, that is how the Sound Blaster 8 bit works, what it sounds like, and uh, as far as using it in other programs, I believe it's compatible with most um, earlier DOS games. It should be able to be picked up pretty quickly. Um, even though it's quite limited as far as its uh, sound quality, but it still does the job. Um, so, until then, I'm going to call it a night.